I was in Beijing on a 32nd floor from a building looking at the, from my room to the city. It was completely covered with smog, sort of like a veil of dust, of, of pollution. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, this is, you know, this is also what technology can do. It can liberate us, but it can also cost eight years of our life or, or give children lung cancer uh, on, on the early stage. So I was like, ah, but we should do something with that, you know. And that was the beginning of the Smog Free Park. China is home to a population of about 1.4 billion people and has undergone serious economic and industrial growth over the last 30 years. Beijing has one of the world's largest manufacturing economies, which has required a ton of energy. That energy has been predominantly powered by coal, which is still burned for the production of electricity, heat, and industrial purposes. The use of coal has led to a massive air pollution problem, laying a thick veil of smog on Chinese megacities. The pollution in Beijing is a quite complicated issue because Beijing experienced a very rapid population growth in the last 30 years and jumping from less than 10 million to over 30 million populations living in Beijing. But at the same time, all those people will need more housing and um, jobs, so then also causing more construction within Beijing and uh, heavy industries development. And that also been one of the cause of the pollution in Beijing. The smog contains a variety of toxic elements, including a class of particles known as particulate matter 2.5, or PM 2.5, which is small enough to penetrate the soft tissue of the lungs and other organs. The long-term effect would certainly be very severe. We already have seen the increased rate of the respiratory disease in children and also elder people because of the smog. So there is a responsibility for Beijing government and also the community in Beijing to transit to a cleaner structure of the economy to help them to be less reliant on the heavy industries. We're here in the Netherlands right outside of Rotterdam to see Dan Rosegaard. Dan is an artist whose work focuses on social design projects that are meant to be functional while still driving home a message. Now it seems like an unlikely place to be talking about China, but Dan's most recent work focuses on air pollution in Chinese megacities. We're here to talk to him about how this technology is going to change the conversation about global air pollution. We are at Studio Rose Garden right now, and so here we work with a team of scientists and of designers on future landscapes in a way. So, where were you when you came up with the idea of a smog-free park? So one day, I think I was on the 32nd floor of my room in Beijing, and I looked at outside at my window, and there was nothing I could see anymore, because the whole city was sort of covered with smog. And I was looking at it, and I was like, ah, but maybe we can do something with that, with these smog particles. And, and that was the beginning of the smog-free park. So how does the actual technology work? How does it pull smog out of the air? So the technology that we use is uh, an ionic technology because the standard filter technology which is out there does not get the small PM2.5 particles. It's a weird thing. The smaller the particles, the less you see them, but the deeper they get into your body, right. which makes them the more dangerous. But what we did is teaming up with experts who have done a lot of new technologies in hospitals to, to purify the air. And they developed a sort of ionic field which charges the neutral floating smog particles in a positive way. And then when you have a, a negatively charged area, you, you, you filter it. Um, and literally building the largest electronic vacuum cleaner in the world, which sucks up dirty air, spits out clean air, and therefore creating the cleanest park in Beijing. So Dan and his team have constructed this prototype of a smog-free park. In the center you have the smog vacuum, and you can see the smog in the center is being actually pulled from the air. Because of the lasers, you can tell where the smog is and where it isn't, and in the center, the lasers can't be seen. This is the stuff we were sucking up. Wow. And this is Beijing smog. Yeah. And so we are actually breathing this. Yeah, uh, as human beings. It's, it's easy it's, to forget about it when it's in the air and disperse, but when yeah. you're looking at it like yeah. this close up, it's, it's incredibly this thick, disgusting. Black yeah. powder. Yeah. 
But we realized we have to do something with that. And we have like buckets of this stuff standing in, in our first studios, in our first pilots. And we realized like that it sort of exists for 42, 48% out of carbon. And right now we're sort of compressing the carbon under a lot of pressure for 30 minutes. And we're making smog jewelry out of it, like rings or cufflinks. And sort of by sharing a ring or, or a cufflink, you donate a thousand cubic meter of clean air to the city. And so the, the finance that we're making with the jewelry actually helps to enable the park. So they feed each other, which is beautiful and, and sad at the same time. These kind of projects, you know, when you, when you launch it, there are always 5,000 people telling you it can never be done, it already exists. And we sort of decided to lovingly ignore them and say, okay, this is not the solution for smog, but by creating a place which is 75% more clean, uses around 11, 1500 watts for the whole area, similar to, to a standard electronic vacuum cleaner, you can give people a sensation of how the future can feel like. And that was, I think, the most powerful incentive that we wanted to make. You're sort of dangling the carrot in front of them and saying, this is what you could have if the behavior changes. Well, it's a provocation. It's a promise and a provocation all in one. And, and everybody knows the solution, but how do we get there? I think this is the real challenge. And sort of by making a place which is shareable, where, where you and I can go to and say, oh, okay, this is what we want. That is, I think, a sort of incentive that other institution or the citizens themselves can meet, can, can make new plans to work together to make a whole city smog free. To push projects like this, where by sharing you make a city better, is I think the way of, of dealing with the future. You know, it's complex. There are no easy answers. You know, and it's easy to judge uh, Beijing and China, but we had the same problem in Europe 60, 70 years ago. Eh? And half of the stuff I'm using right now is being produced there. So it's not just China, it's all of us. So on that note, you mentioned European industrialization and, and certainly during the US Industrial Revolution. Yeah, like we, Detroit and all these things. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. we produced a ton of our own carbon and a ton of our own problems. Yeah. And how do we help promote growth in developing nations without promoting pollution? We have to be creative. And we have to stop making an existing system 10% less worse. But we have to invest in new ideas, new dreams, new opportunities. And this is on one hand about high technology, but on the other hand, a desire to be curious and to make new things happen. And let's hope it's enough. Yeah. So Rosegard admits that this is not a solution to our environmental crisis, but in a place like China where smog is commonplace, this at least offers a glimpse at what life could be like if we took the steps toward a cleaner planet. Okay, I know what I want to say. Oh my God. Holy shit, man. That was so quiet.